Hello and welcome back. We are continuing our season of, or actually our series of Python certification tutorials. This episode, we are going to start into multiple inheritance. We talked about classes before, and we talked about them as uh, basics about it, the properties and collect basically a collection of methods and properties. Now, we can inherit, so we can extend classes, and we've seen that before. We saw that in our, uh, if I pop over here, we saw this in our little inheritance example. Now, one of the features of Python is it allows for multiple inheritance. That's what we're going to start playing around with today. Now, in these examples, I actually went ahead and threw a few things together. And so we have uh, three classes, base one, base two, and base three. And oh, it expected a couple, so let me get some blank lines here just so it doesn't complain. Oh, and that needs to be, that's not going to be static. So each of these, I'm keeping it moderately simple. What I'm trying to do here is I've got these three classes and each one of them has sort of the same thing uh, it's just to help us see how multiple inherited uh, multiple parents work with each one we've got base one two and three and it's just going to say it's got a value by default it's going to be i am base whatever it is based in my name it's going to be uh, i've got some little bit of uh, output in case a constructor was called and then i've got this display method so then I come down to my class, and this is how we do multiple inheritance. It's just a comma-separated list. Uh, before, if I wanted to inherit just from base one, then that's how it would look. Then I'm off and running. Whoop. Oh, and it doesn't like that, but that's okay. Uh, I'll do it. Well, I will. I'll call it this way so it cleans that up. There we go, so it's not complaining. But if I wanted to do multiple inheritance, then I can simply add on additional classes. And so we're gonna start with something simple. And so I'm gonna do, um, well, let's just do it here. I'm just gonna do it, my class equals new, my class. Oop, it's not new. It's my class. And then let's just do print. Well, let's just call because I think I already did the prints. Yes, and then I'm just going to do my class dot display. So we're going to just, this is a multiple inheritance, base one, two, and three in that order. And then we've got some additional stuff, but really what matters right now is we're going to look at the constructors. And then we're going to look at, uh, we're going to call display and see what happens. So if I go in here and I do, uh, I think it's called multiple inheritance. So in this case, since it's just base one, two, and three, I can see here that it calls the first constructor. It doesn't call any others. And when I do display, it's calling it on display one. The reason it does this is because it finds the first that matches. So I could come in here uh, and, it, and so let's, uh, and let me show you that. So let me change it, let's reverse the order. So if I do three, two, one, then it's gonna call base three. If I do uh, two, three, one, then it calls the second. And so this is where it can get can get confusing rather quickly, is that what it does when you have multiple inheritance is it walks through these classes. And then instead of doing some sort of, I don't know, combination or something like that, what it does here is it's gonna come in and it's gonna say base one, does it have, here when I call this, when I call display, it's gonna say, does base one have a display? Yes, it does. And so I'm gonna call that. Now if I do display two and display three, which is normally what you would have, you're probably not gonna have, and you have to watch out for it, you're probably not gonna have collisions across multiples. Or 
Uh, so let's do that first. So I can also, because I've done these, I can call now whoop, display two and display three. So all of those are available. If you've dealt with uh, interfaces, that shows up more often than not. There's several times that uh, interfaces is used for multiple inherents, much like this. So if uh, base one was actually, let's say, uh, printing, base two was actually uh, file manipulation, and base three was, uh, I don't know, calculations, you probably wouldn't have any overlap, uh, overlap in those. So you would be able to pull in all of those methods. In this case, now let's go look at it. And we'll see here that display one, two, and three were all called. Because I go to uh, display two, it's going to go to base one. It's going to say, oh, I don't see it. So that's going to go to base two. It's going to say, yes, I found it here. And so now we're off and running. I can use that one. Now, what I could do, and this is where it gets a little tricky. So let's say I go back here. And let's say I do leave those as three. Well. Ah, uh, yeah, let's just leave those as three. Ah, uh, no, let's do it. I'm going to do it this way. So, so what happen, this is what happens when you do it on the fly. So let's say that each of them has a display. And I'm going to do it like this. I'll just say... And base three display call like that. Now what I can do is I can come down in here and I can call uh, if I can call up. So let's do this first. Let's do display and let's look at what super gives us. So if I do Print super. Uh, and now I'm going to call. I'm just going to leave it simple like here. Let's take a look at that. So super my class just returns a my class object. But let's do uh, let's do super dot display. And actually, I don't need to print that. And he's still going to call the first one because he's just going to grab that. If I call display two, then it's going to call display two. So super is actually giving me those three. So I can actually call uh, super. Uh, let's see. Let's do it this way. So I'm going to do super display, and then I'm going to call. Uh, class display called if I do that then I'm going to see that it's called it but it also called the super and let's try this for let's see if we get a list back And there it's going to give us a problem because the super is not giving us those separate objects, those separate classes. It's it's giving us this, um, this amalgamation of those three. So while we handle this is we can come in and let's we can actually call up the chain. So let me do this. So if we want the the constructor, we can do that here. Um, pardon me whilst I type a second. So I'm going to call each of the three up the chain. I'm going to play around with it a little bit. Um, let's do, uh, let me steal the init here. Oh.
Okay. So, what we can do is, although we don't necessarily see that in these above, uh, but what we can do is we can tell it with a super, we can say what is the uh, super that we want to use. And so in this case, we can say specifically, I want to use the, like in the init, in the constructor, I'm going to use a constructor for base one, then I'm going to call two, and then I'm going to call three. And I could actually reverse these. So now we're going to see something a little funky because what we're going to do is we're going to see uh, this is actually overwritten, and now it's going to force an order on the init. Uh, but we're going to see a different order when we do the display. Whoops. We do the display. And so again, we're actually calling into, we're you know, manually calling into a specific class. So let's see how that looks. And so it's going to blow up on us here. But now we would see is, so first we see... Uh, well, let's see where it blew up on line 63. Did I miss something? Uh, base 3 should have a display. What did I miss? Wait. It's died in 68 when it called display. And it died in 63. I did not. So this is pretty interesting. This is something I had not run into. <laughs> but uh, let's see. Oh. Let's do, I am, let's just do it this way because I didn't send that. Oops, that was a mistake. Uh, val1 equals I am my class. Oh, and it doesn't like that because it, uh, let's do self.name equals val1. And okay, so let's walk through this one a little bit. And so from the top, uh, let's just do the constructor first. So looking just at the constructor, which if this works should be three, two, one. And we'll see here three two and then it calls that so it doesn't call this third one it only calls the first two so it call it now let's see if we just reverse this just to be safe now it calls two and then one and then it calls the init now, if I don't call, oh, because it, yeah, because it's definitely doing an override, and then it calls my class init. So the interesting thing is it does not call the constructor the third time. So this may be a little bug that we found. And you're not honestly going to do this very often, but just so you know, yep, so it calls one and two. Oh. But that's calling that up the chain, it's not actually doing, oh, because it's doing it, uh, well, let's see. If I do, say you leave it three, two, one. Now it's just doing that, it's not calling anything up the chain. Whereas before, we all, uh, it only called the first, that's right. And so now let's, let's take a look at the display just because. Now here in line 55, it says that it doesn't have. So it's not allowing us to call up to that level. Let's say if we called three. Oh, I think we need to do it like we did here. So let's try this. Well, shoot, there's a couple ways we can do it. So let's say uh, I'm gonna call this 01 equals that. And then let's try 01.display. And it's still going to give me that it doesn't find that. So that super object. 
So let's try this. And it's giving me a none, so it's not returning it back. So when I call, oh, when I call super, it's not actually, that's right, it's not returning a class. It's just calling up and doing something. So I could do, so it would have to do like a display, but it's not going to recognize that. So you really get sort of stuck calling up the chain uh, if you want to do, if you want to call up the chain, you, if you want to try to somehow break it. Uh, that is something that's that's a challenge with Python, but I want to make sure that you sort of looked at that, is that there's not a, uh, while you can do it to some extent, you can do it in an initializer, but you have to make sure it has that, that uh, constructor. Otherwise, it's just going to go through each of these, as we saw, um, let's see if I just go back to this guy. Oh, well, we see this anyway. Uh, let's clear that up. Uh, saved, yep. So let's just clear that out just to go look back at that. Is notice that we are only calling the first constructor because constructors exist everywhere. And so I'm only going to get the actual constructor built off the first class. And that may or may not matter. Um, otherwise, what I'm going to have to do is I would have to go in here and manually call uh, separate pieces. So I could come in and, well, this would be a more complex thing if I wanted to really get into it. If I wanted to set some values on each level of these, then I would have to do so. Um, so if I did... Let's see what happens if I do val2. I don't think that's going to matter for me. I still get the same thing because it grabs the first one that matches and I'm off and running. And so even if I do uh, my class test, um, it's still calling that base3, which is the first one it's going to call. So there's a lot of complexity, which is why some places don't even deal with it. Some places don't deal with um, multiple inheritance. Python does, but you have to treat it uh, with a lot of forethought. There is not necessarily an easy way to, uh, to sort of meld stuff and just realize that the, the, probably the most important thing you got to realize is with multiple inheritance, it starts with, it goes in order that you see in this declaration here. And then you can start moving stuff around. I think that's not, it doesn't go, my understanding is it doesn't go terribly deep on the certification. You're not gonna have to beat up, you know, be beat up with those kinds of questions, but understand that order matters. And then that probably will be, you know, get you through it. And know that, especially if you have classes that are, that have no collisions, then it would make a lot of sense. Uh, but then you're just gonna have to, in that case, you would you would want to go in and do some work based on the uh, the initializer, and that it does seem to have some limits as far as calling the the supers. So uh, definitely, your mileage may vary on these. I don't think, like I said, I don't think that's going to run. You're going to run into that as much in the uh, certification tests as you are in the real world. And I think now it's time for us to uh, unknot our brain a little bit, and we will come back next time and work on some other. Uh, class related stuff. But until then, go out there and have yourself a great day, a great week, and we'll talk to you next time.